SharePoint is not actually my favorite area. Unfortunately, I have to work with SharePoint and every time I work with SharePoint, I often encounter some weird situations. Hence, I need to post videos related to the SharePoint. One of such situation is the integrity of the files, which I have posted already in my blog. In short, when we upload a file and download the same, the file size is different. Meaning, SharePoint is modifying our file after we upload to SharePoint. That way, we cannot check the file integrity using any hashing method. In this video, we are going to see how can we stop SharePoint from modifying our files. First, let us see the problem. I have a file, a symbol tracker-original.xlsx, this file having a symbol table. Now I am going to create a copy of this file tracker.xlsx and that copied file I am going to upload into SharePoint. In order to upload to SharePoint, we can simply drag and drop. We can see it uploaded. Now I am going to delete that file tracker.xlsx and now I am going to download from SharePoint. By default, the file will be there in the downloads folder. So I am going to bring that file from the downloads folder to the sample files. This is a file. So we can see the file size is different. We don't need to find any hash or checksum to make sure the file is modified. So let us rename as downloaded. Now let us see how this behavior can be changed in SharePoint. This behavior is caused by feature called parsing the documents, office documents, such as DOCX, XLSX, PPTX files. And that property can be modified using the PowerShell. The SharePoint Online UI don't have any options for doing that. We are using Visual Studio Code for developing PowerShell. Here I already connected to the site. If you are not connected, you can connect using this commandlet. This is a document library where I upload the files. So just to confirm, data site is a site name, important files is a library name. List library, token library, drive, all translate into a token library where we can store the files in SharePoint. Now let us see what is the state of parser disabled in the token library. Run this command, so it will be telling false. Parser disabled false means parser is enabled. The moment parser is enabled, it will be doing that modification of our files. Now let us see how this can be modified to true. Here is a code for that. We are assigning the token library into a variable called list. Then we are updating the property on the list using this line. Finally, we have to update the list using the update function. Now if we check the property, we can see it is true. Here true means parser is disabled. So any office document we upload will not be modified by the SharePoint. In such situation, if we download the file, it will be exactly same as the input file. Even the checksum will be same. Let us see that in action. I am deleting the previous file that I uploaded. This was already modified by SharePoint. I am making the copy again. I am renaming into tracker.xlsx. Now I am uploading the tracker.xlsx into SharePoint. It uploaded. Now I have to download again. It is in my downloads folder. So from there, I am moving to the sample files. There's already tracker.xlsx because we didn't delete that. So I am replacing the file. Now the newly downloaded file is there in the name tracker.xlsx. I'm just renaming that downloaded after disabling parser. Now at least we can see the file size is same. But to make sure they are really same, let us run the checksum test. This is the way we can get the checksum of the files for comparison. The command let is get dash file hash. First one is original file. Second is a downloaded file after disabling the parser. I'm running these commands. So here we can see hash is same for both the files. When we look at any of the Microsoft answers in the forum, we can see that it is not even uh, documented and they are not disclosing whether this is by design or not. When we go to their user voice community, the user voice instance is no longer available. But the property parser disabled is documented in Microsoft documentation. This same thing can be done using C Sharp or any other language as far as we can make a web request to SharePoint endpoint. If you need any help, please ask in the comment section. I hope this would have been helped you in solving your problems. Thanks for watching the video. Bye.